I've gained over 100,000 views teaching people data engineering. For example, here's some of my popular tutorials. But if I was to learn and start all over again, I would do it completely different because I wasted months. So in this video, I'm going to tell you what I've done and how it was wrong and what I would do to do it right all over again, i.e. what you should do. So let's start by looking at my mistakes. So number one is that I learned cloud tools way too fast. So I did have a background in cloud engineering and cloud engineering covers a bunch of stuff, all the stuff you can see here. And now when I was looking into data engineering thinking, what is it, how does it work? I came across this. This is roughly the spread of a data engineer, according to this picture on Google. But I thought, how do I bridge the gap between where I am right now and where I've got to go? So if we look at here to bridge this gap, I thought, let's try and use Azure, i.e. cloud. Why? Well, A, I already know a bit of Azure, so, I can build on top of that. Secondly, I know that Azure do credits, so I can get like $200 in free credits to do this data engineering. And data engineering is normally loads of processing required. And additionally, it scales easily. So when you have this, and then you add in the fact that they also have a structured learning path, i.e. a certification, which for reference, they have now deprecated and it's getting replaced with Microsoft Fabric. So just, you know, be careful what you're what you're using on the, the Microsoft side of things. But when you add that all together, I thought you would get data engineer, but you don't. It turns out you essentially get a data infrastructure engineer, i.e. you're still basically a cloud engineer, disappointingly, because you're really just leveraging the tools as opposed to learning the underlying data engineering principles. Which gets me on to the second point. I did not learn the fundamentals first. So what is a data engineer? Well, a data engineer is a professional who designs and builds systems to collect, store, and analyze data, i.e. your kind of ETL, ELT pipelines, extract, transform, load, or extract, load, transform. Now, what I was doing is I was using the GUI, so the graphical user interface, i.e. the Azure portal, which was cool because it did teach me the process, i.e. the architecture of a simple pipeline, right? But it did not teach me the fundamentals. And by fundamentals, I'm referring specifically here to database schemas. I didn't look at these for months. SQL, I didn't really look at that much because everyone's using Spark. Spark's the big thing. Uh, and so I was just going straight to Spark transformations and avoiding SQL, which is the core fundamentals that you need to know. Additionally, ETL, ELT, I was understanding the process of how these work, but then when I tried to troubleshoot, it would take me hours because I don't know what's happening under the hood. I was just having like, this activity goes to this one, goes to this one, and if something doesn't pass, I don't know why, I don't know what to do about it. So really, I wish I had that fundamental basis. An example of how this um, actually looks in practice that you may be aware of is like GoDaddy. So GoDaddy, you make websites, right? But it's a WYSIWYG. So what you see is what you get, kind of GUI interface. So you would just be like, oh, I want a little picture of me here. And I want a little blurb of me here. And I don't know, something here, right? And suddenly now you're like, oh, I'm a website builder. I can make websites. Kind of, right? But if you really want to learn how websites work, you really need to look at something like this, like the three tier architecture. The three tier architecture for websites is a presentation tier, which is the tier you see, your kind of GoDaddy. Your logic tier, you can get a little bit of GoDaddy stuff there, but your server, your logic tier, how it's actually running the APIs, etc. And then your data tier, i.e. your database. Now, if you really wanted to understand this, you would create this. You create a three tier application, say, on your local computer, as opposed to using GoDaddy. Now, this gets into the third point too, which is structured learning. Well, these fundamentals, I didn't come across them because I wasn't following a direct path. I was essentially going here, there, and everywhere to try and get from A to B. So I was going through essentially tutorial hell. I'd find one tutorial, say this one here, and it'd be like, get hired as an Azure Data Engineer. So I'd think, oh, well, the guy must know what he's talking about. So then I'd follow that tutorial, I'd get stuck a bunch. So then I'd be like, hmm, 
what's Databricks? I hear that's cool. Suddenly I now have a couple of tutorials I've not finished. And then I'm like, wait, actually, I don't even know what, what ETL is. Then I'm like, well, what's the schema? And then I'm like, right, I kind of know stuff, so let me try do another project to get an understanding of what they do in the real world. And then I'm like, wait, actually, how is that even working in Azure? And I end up learning how to create a simple data pipeline in Python. Why? Because I don't understand what's happening under the hood. So as you can see here, it's an absolute nightmare. It takes months of trial and error. And so when I was at this point, I just felt completely stuck. I'd basically spent months clicking buttons here in the Azure portal and had no idea how it was all working under the hood. And so if I could go back, I would instead do it in a structured approach. This is where the sponsor for today's video, DataCamp, comes in. For the past few months, I've been using DataCamp and I know that when I started, I wished I had this Associated Data Engineer on SQL track because if we go on here, it shows you SQL, how to use it. You then start creating projects. You then start designing databases. And then you create more projects. So you're getting this real hands-on experience and starting through code, which is just exactly how you should do it. And not only SQL and Associate, they have a standard data engineering track as well, as well as professional. So here an example is I'm actually logged in, looking at it. And you have here the introduction to Python for developers. So if we click in here and say, Click continue. I'll show you what it looks like in here. But essentially, you now have everything inside this containerized environment inside DataCamp. So now you can actually do your coding inside here and you can run your code. So you don't have to worry about running it on your own machine, which was my initial worry, which is why I used Azure. Now, not only that, structured learning, SQL and Python, so you're not locked in and you're actually learning how to code, and it's step by step. But you're building these projects as well. So, for example, if we scroll down, let's see, building a retail data pipeline. If we click on here, we can then see this full data project. Let's continue in. We can see that entire data project and work through it all in here on DataCamp. How cool is that? So I wish I had this when I started out instead of going into tutorial hell. Not only would it have saved me a bunch of time here, taking me A to B, but it also have taught me these fundamentals and allowed me to build on them. And not only that, but they have an industry recognized certification as well. So as I was saying with Azure, I started looking into this and then they canned the certification. So I was stuck. Instead, I could just get a certification certifying that I know how to do it in Python, SQL, and the standard tools that are out there right now. Definitely recommend it. It's 50% off right now, as you can see. So go and sign up with the first link in the description below. So with that in mind now, let's look at what I would do differently and why. So the first thing to really understand here, and you probably have got a gist already, is that software engineering is a discipline and data engineering is essentially a sub-discipline of software engineering. And because of this, you are best, in my opinion, to learn, say, Python, because Python then can be used in AI, it can be used in software engineering, data engineering, scripting for, say, cloud or DevOps. So essentially, it doesn't lock you in. You now understand a tool that you can leverage. And when you are learning something, let's say, Python, you really do have to then focus on these fundamentals of writing good code of testing your code, of version control, say on GitHub, and now you're getting transferable skills that you're learning fundamental skills, all of which are on DataCamp. Whereas if I was to do Azure Data Factory, for example, that doesn't really transfer because it's just a GUI for doing stuff. So it doesn't transfer the same way that say a programming language does. The second thing is that I really would have to learn data engineering concepts. So here, for example, we have the data engineering lifecycle. And from this, there are a few core concepts. We have, for example, ETL pipelines. Like I was saying, I know how to make them in Azure Data Factory. I can make some blocks like this, right? Nice and simple. But then the problem is like one of them breaks somewhere along here. And I kind of no idea how to troubleshoot it because I don't really know what I'm doing. So I'd have to get a solid understanding of ETL. Additionally, schemas really understand what do they mean because it impacts 
the visualizations at the end that impacts everything about your data process. You have to understand the data. And how do you do that? Well, you need to know SQL. It's as simple as that. That's how you interact with the data. That's how you can figure all this out. Additionally, data types. So not everything is in this relational database SQL style. You need to understand the different data types that are being used. And ultimately, you'll end up using Python as well for that. So structured learning, as you can guess what I'm going to say here, is that we have three ways of structured learning. The first one here, boot camps. Boot camps can be great, but if we look in here at like Lawagon's boot camp for data engineering, 5,900 euros. That's crazy, man. So in my opinion, don't do a boot camp because then... It's going to be essentially another part-time job and it's going to that you're paying to get yes you're getting the skills and maybe a bit of networking but like it just seems a bit excessive so instead of the boot camps you have courses for example we have here our data camp course data engineer and python and for reference your boot camp's almost six thousand euros for here in the uk so data camp they have different prices depending on where you are based this one's only 10.53 a month so even if you've done that in the same time frame there, so that would be like six months, it'd be like 65 quid instead of 5,900 euros. Just crazy. And then the next part, which kind of leads into that as well, is certifications. As I was saying, like Agile certification, they just can that. So, I mean, you could do it, I suppose, but then it's going to be deprecated and they're going to move on to new tools, which is a big danger. So instead, just solidify your tools which are not locked down, Python, SQL, etc. And you can do that through the Data Engineering Certificate on Data Camp, which comes with your subscription. So 50% off if you want to use Data Camp. Link will be the first link in the description below. But there you have it. That's how I would do it differently. Essentially, if you're going to take one thing away from this, is don't jump straight into tools. Make sure you understand the fundamentals. So anyway, till next time, take care, and I'll see you later.